assisting and endeavoring to steal your faith, because if he can steal your faith, then he can steal your eternal destination. This thing is, it, it, what, what, it, it really is a mind, mind game. Yeah. Yeah. It really is a war of the mind. to you. Hope everyone is having a great, great morning as we move into the afternoon. We are in the midst of talking about our lives in Christ Jesus. Welcome. Welcome to Deacon Gales. Hey, Deacon Gales. How are you, ma'am? Miss you so much. Welcome, Pastor Deborah Vinson. Welcome, welcome to Elder Gloria Moxley. Welcome to Elder Bruce Moxley. I'm, I'm professional today. <laughs> I'm putting name, putting titles out there today. I hope everyone's having a great day. As I said, we are in the midst of talking about our life, your life in Christ Jesus. And let me turn this down a little bit. The last couple of days, I, I hope have been a blessing to you. Yesterday, we talked a little bit <clears throat> and just introduced some things out of Psalm 139. Um, let me put my microphone on here. Uh, but we talked about the fact that God is always present with you, your heavenly father is always present with you and that he knows you. He's always present and that he knows you. And prayerfully through understanding that uh, and going back and, and reading through Psalm 139, a Davidic Psalm, um, that you know that 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 helps to transform our lives when we know that God is with us when we know that he knows us better than we know ourselves we said this that he knows our thoughts he knows our ways he even knows our words before they even come out he he knows us that that just that in that that type of detail he knows you so know that we can't hide from God. You know, it, we, 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 are, we are exposed to him at all times, whether the lights are on, the lights are off, whether it's night or day, uh, whether we are wherever we are, we are always in the, in the presence of God. And again, practice the presence of God. In other words, uh, be conscious of the fact, you know, God is with me right now. That, should, that, that, that not only brings uh, conviction to make sure to help us to make the right choices, but it also brings, uh, it brings a soundness of mind. It brings protection. It, it helps us to know that, you know what, he's there. He knows our needs, although we still have to ask. He knows our needs, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a little bit about yesterday. Today, today. I want to I, I want to talk about something that sounds so, for lack of a better word, cliche, but it is so so vital in us um, us having a good really I I would say even a good self image. And here's what we're talking about today: God loves you. Now, see, we start talking about God loves you. Oh yeah, I know God loves me. I know God loves me. No, God loves you. He loves you. And we're going to dig into this a little bit because we want we I want us to understand and some of this is going to be uh something you've heard before, but but I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you a greater revelation 
of the amount or the quality and quantity of love that God has for you. First John chapter four, verse nine and 10 is our scripture today. First John chapter four, verses nine and 10. God loves you. This is how God showed, and this is out of the Message Bible. I'm gonna read out of the Message Bible because I like the way that it reads. This is how God showed his love for us. Now he's about to explain to us how God showed his love. Now, when it's one thing to love someone from, uh, you know, to say I love you, there's another thing to show that we love someone. That's a, that's a big difference. It's easy to say I love you, but when it's time to show the love, that's when, well, that's when we find out whether we really love someone. And God said, I'm, I'm, I am the perfect example. Not only do I say I love you, but I'm going to show you how much I love you. It says, this is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. This is now why, 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 you know, what is it? Why did he do it? That was my question. That's my question. I'm reading the word father, but why? You know I mean? You don't, you didn't have to do this. I mean, nobody, nobody can make him uh, send his son into the world. He could have just very easily just said, let's wipe this thing out and start all back over. He has the power to do it. He can do it. But he didn't even, he didn't wipe it out and start all back over. He continued through and, and, and persevered through what he began. That's another message right there. He persevered through what he began. Although we messed it up, he kept going rather than just saying, I'm going to start all back over. He kept going and said, hey, I'm going to send my son. I have a plan for the people, for my creation. I have, let me say it that way. I have a plan for my creation. His plan was to send his son. So here's the, here's the situation though. While we were still his creation, we were no longer his children. Now, now please get this. We were no longer his children. We were still his creation, but no longer his children. And yet, and let me get, get even more specific. Not only were we not his children, but we were his enemies. When, 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 when humanity, Adam and Eve, Adam being representative of humanity, when humanity chose to rebel against the father, or go, uh, rebel against God, let me say it that way. When humanity chose to rebel against God, then we were repositioned from his children to his enemies. Rebellion brought about a different position. We became his enemies. Now, here's what you might not have ever thought about. Before you came to Christ, you were his enemy. I mean, it doesn't sound popular, but that's what we were. We were sinners. We were sinful. We were sinners in our very essence and nature, and we were sinful in our behaviors and our actions, in our lifestyles. We were sinners and we were sinful. Sinful, not, not, not sin half full, sinful. We were full of sin. I, I, again, I always say this. I didn't say that you didn't say please and thank you. That has nothing to do with sin. Sin means that we were rebellious against God, but didn't mean you weren't polite. Didn't mean that you didn't do some nice things for people or buy somebody a present. It meant that we were rebellious towards God in our very nature, right? And in our lifestyles, we were sinful. We were in a bad place. Bad is not even a, a, a good enough word to say how, how much, here's a word, and we were depraved. We were, listen, I know this is going to sound, this is going to sound really crazy, but we were on the level, maybe just, maybe just a little bit above an animal because sinful, when, when sin is present, 
we will do things that we would even shock ourselves, right? We would think about things, say things, uh, do things, have behaviors that were animalistic. You know, I mean, you just, just didn't care about other people, didn't have no conscious, right? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to give us an idea as to where we were. And yet, and yet he still loved you. That's tough. We were, we were in such a, we were, we had fallen from his glory, fallen. We had fallen to such a low place of depravity and sin and sinfulness. Yet at the same time, he loved us enough to send his son to, to redeem us, to bring us back to him. That's love, y'all. That is love. You know, um, and, and why else did he do it? He, he, he did it because he is love. He is, he is love, right? He is love. And so what is this example? The, the example is this, that the same love of God, the same love of God that, that literally redeemed us back, right? Back for, to him from being a sinner and being sinful, that same love, listen to this, now resides on the inside of you by way of Jesus Christ and through the person of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. You have the capacity. You have, if you choose, if you want to submit to that fruit of the Spirit called love, that fruit, fruit means the, you know, the, the, the the uh, 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 the outpouring of what the spirit of God uh, has within him. As we submit to the fruit, to the spirit of God, we have the ability to love the same way. So what does that mean? That means that you can love an enemy. You have the capacity. Now, you might not choose to love an enemy, right? That's our choice. And if we, but if we will submit to God, we can do this. But I'm just trying to show you the capacity of love that you have. So therefore, if you can choose and submit to the Holy Spirit to love an enemy, then you can choose and submit to the Holy Spirit to love uh, another person that you're friends with that may have done you wrong. Or you can choose to submit to the love of the Holy Spirit in order to love uh, your spouse, if you need to love them in a better way, or your children, whatever the case may be, we have the capacity to love. Now, there may be some people that you feel like, hey, they just, they, they, they weren't there for me. They abandoned me or they hurt me or, you know, all of the above, all of the above, those scenarios that we can come up with. But ultimately, you have the capacity to love. Why? Because the same love of God that loved you when you were, you were the worst that you could ever be is the same love of God that's in you now as a, as a person that is in Christ Jesus to love someone else. And let me say this. It's not something that's comfortable for us. It's not, it's not a comfortable thing to love someone who's done you wrong. That's not comfortable, but we're not talking about comfort. We're talking about submission. We're talking about submission. We're talking about obedience. We're talking about loving, having now having the capacity to love someone that is, here's the word, unlovable. That's where we were. We were unlovable. We were enemies. We were sinners who were sinful. I know I said that a lot today, but that's what we were. We were unlovable, but God is full of love and he still loved us. He sent his uh, son into the world so that we might live, have eternal life through him. Not just this physical life, but that we may live through him, that we may have eternal life through him. All right. Listen to verse 10, though. Verse 10, this is the kind of love we are talking about. 
Not that we once, not, no, not that we once upon a time loved God because we didn't love God, although he still chose to love us. <laughs> I know, I know. I know you don't want to hear this today. I know you don't want to hear it today. I know you don't want to hear it. Not that we once upon a time loved God. We weren't loving on God and God said, oh, they're so lovable. Let me just love on them. No, we were like totally rebellious. Forget you, God. <clears throat> Forget you, God. I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm doing what I want to. I'm not, I'm not interested in living the way that you want me to live. I'm going to lie. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to steal. I'm going to, I'm going to be immoral. I'm going to be perverted. I'm going to be whatever, whatever your thing was. I'm going to be that because I'm doing me. I'm doing me. Right. And so he still loved us though enough to give us an opportunity to come back to him through Christ Jesus. It says, not that we once upon a time loved God, this is verse 10 again, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. Mm, mm, mm. He said he loved us and sent his son. What did his son do? What did Jesus do? He was a sacrifice. He was a sacrifice to clear away our sins, number one, sins cleared away, all that rebellion, all that stuff. Now, that's why there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are, what is our topic? Those who are in Christ Jesus. All sins wiped away, not even covered. See, covered means that they're still up under there somewhere. Washed away means they're totally gone. That should make you feel good. Every sin, every thought, every thoughtful sin, every sinful action, every sinful word, every sinful behavior, the, the times that we were in sinful lifestyles, every sin washed away by the blood of Jesus. Gone. Got gone. Forgotten. He said, I, I'll choose to forget it. I know we still remember it. And I know that the enemy still tries to bring uh, condemnation to you by um, uh, uh, trying to persuade you into remembering it and make you think that you are who you used to be. No, washed away by the powerful blood of Jesus. Every sin washed away. And that's just the first part. That's just the first part. I'm almost finished. And the damage that those sins did to your relationship with God. See, this is why, this is why um, Paul always said grace and peace to you. Grace, God's unmerited favor. In other words, his, uh, some get receiving what we don't, don't deserve. Grace. But the peace, here is what peace meant. It meant that now we have peace with God. We are no longer his enemies. We are at peace with him by way of Jesus Christ. Do you know your one decision? I know you know this, but somebody might not. Do you know your one decision to say, you know what? Jesus is the one. He is the Messiah. I believe that. He is the sent one from God the Father. He is the one I'm putting my faith in, in his life, death on the cross, and resurrection. Do you know when you did that, you no longer were an enemy of God, but now you are at peace with him. You are within his favor now by way of Jesus. So, a couple questions as we end today. I want to ask you a couple questions. And I want you to take just a split second to answer them real quick. Do you feel worthy to receive God's love? Do you feel worthy to receive God's love? Feel. Watch your feelings. Nothing wrong with feelings, emotions, nothing wrong with them. God gave them to us. But watch how you feel. Because sometimes 
I don't feel worthy. Other times I feel worthy. That's the, it's kind of a trick question. Do you feel worthy? Okay, well, your answer may be no right now. It might be yes right now. If it's no, here's the next question. Is receiving love easy for you? Is receiving love easy for you? Let me tell you why it might not be easy for you. Because many times and most times in our lives, we are conditioned to feel like we must earn love. To feel like we must earn love. I don't feel like I have lived up to what it takes to be loved by someone. And see, that, that why the reason I say that's conditioning is because we, all, most of our, well, all but one, of our relationships are with people. You have your relationship, your vertical relationship with God, then you have your horizontal relationship with all these people, husbands, wives, children, friends, coworkers, all these uh, horizontal relationships. And usually with dealing with people, I was thinking about this this morning, y'all give me just another minute. I was thinking about this this morning. Usually, and not not always, please, please, not always, but usually the only love that is that is really unconditional is that of a parent. That's usually, and, and that's not always. I know that some people come from different situations, but usually the love of a parent is usually the one love that is unconditional regardless of what you do they still love you i didn't say they weren't disappointed but they still love you every other relationship husband wife um friends if you do something that is beyond that limit they're through with you that means that it's conditional right so we're, the reason going back to what i'm saying the reason that receiving love many times for us is not easy because we've been conditioned to, to feel like we it's conditional. We must earn the love. I must make sure that I'm doing what I need to do to be loved by you. And God says this, nope, I love you. Oh, I, I, I know what you said last night or what you did two weeks ago. I love you. There's nothing you can do to make me love you any less or any more. That's God speaking to you because of Jesus. See, in your life in Christ Jesus is not predicated on what you do. Your life in Christ Jesus is predicated on whose you are. It's predicated on Jesus and Jesus alone, y'all. I'm not saying that God doesn't want us to be obedient. Yes, he does. Yes, he wants us to live righteously. But the first thing he wants us to understand is that it is all about Christ. I love you because of what Christ did for you. I already knew how messed up you were. <laughs> That's why I bought you back to clean you up. I already knew how messed up you were. I already knew that this was going to be a marathon, that this was going to be a progression in life in order to help you to become who you're supposed to be. He already knew it. He already knew that he already knows that in two days you're going to mess up again. And he still loves you. He loves you, y'all. I'm telling you, receive this. It's, it'll set you free. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Here's my last question. Do you think God requires you to be worthy of love or feel worthy of love before he loves you? I'm going to give you the answer to that question. No, God does not require you to be worthy of love or feel worthy of love before he loves you. He just loves you. And then the Bible says this, and we love him because what? He first loved us. What is it that will help us to, to want to obey God and want to serve God and all that stuff that we hear so much about 
is to know that he first loved you unconditionally. You came back to him. That I, I would say that would be the only condition that you that you chose to come back to him through Christ Jesus. Outside of that, he like it's grace and peace. Now let's now just let's just walk together, one day at a time. All right, I went long today, but it was worth it. I love y'all. I want you to have a great rest of your Thursday. We're gonna pick up on this this series on your life in Christ Jesus. Hey, I want to throw something out to you real quick. I've been praying about this Moxley Ministries. I, I want to begin to get. Uh, I mean, just begin to expand uh, uh, my the, the teaching ministry that the Lord has given me. I want to really begin to expand it across social media. I really want to begin to get it out uh, just into the world, you know, just get it out into the world, Moxley ministry. So I want to ask y'all to begin to write, write that down for me and begin to pray for me. I don't, I don't know how this is going to go. I know, I mean, TV and all that stuff, but I mean, I just want to take it one step at a time, be led by the Holy Spirit. But I, I believe that the Lord has put some things in my, put some things in me and a gift in me to share with the world. So uh, um, please pray for me. That's all I'm asking. Pray for me. All right. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.